Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. we got our loud local band of the week, and it's Monster Watch. Local band of the week, Monster Watch. You find out where they're playing. You want to know where you can get their music. They have a four track record. It's called Zot. It's available on some of the streaming services, places, all that fun stuff. But you got to go see them live. These guys are awesome. And they're playing with Duke Evers for that album release show that's happening at the Crocodile on June 8th. And look, if you are a local music fan, you're going to love Loud and Local, the Sunday night edition. That's right. Two solid hours of all local music. Great bands from the Pacific Northwest. Bands like Monster Watch. Friday, everyone. About time. I know, yeah. right? Happy uh, start to the uh, long weekend. Yes, sir. Hopefully people out there have plans. I don't know, go camping or something. Oh, well, uh, yeah. what I, about you? Are you a man about town? Nope. I've got zero plans. All right. Well, look at you, <laughs> yeah. Salvatore. Yeah. So everyone else can have plans for me, and then they can tweet at me, and then uh, they can show me all the fun things they're doing. Is this a no-pants weekend? Yes. That's what I thought. Now it will be. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, that's disturbing. Let's get to our contestant today. Oh, We've got yes. Adam and Enum Claw. <laughs> Adam, are you there? Yeah. Excellent. What's he playing for today, Steve? Tickets to enjoy a couple of days with the WWE because nice. on Sunday, June 23rd, big pay per view happening at Tacoma Dome, and it's going to be WWE Stomping Grounds. You get a pair of tickets for that. And then you're going to head up north to Everett for Monday Night Raw happening on Monday, June 24th at the Angel of the Winds Arena in Everett. If you want information, tickets, and all that good stuff, just go to KISW.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. Yeah. For those playing at home, Adam will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Adam, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do this. What type of creature is the title character in the computer animated feature Bolt? It's a dog. Yes. What group had the hit song No Scrubs? Uh, TLT. Yes. What is the main color of the Energizer Bunny? Pink. Yes. Who wrote Of Mice and Men? Pass. The actor, uh, what actor is the star of the 2015 science fiction film The Martian? Oh, gosh. Matt Damon. Yes. What country is Normandy in? France. Yes. What Shakespeare play asks to be or not to be? Is it Romeo and Juliet? No. Hamlet. Yes. Eczema affects what part of the body? Skin. Yes. What cheese is served with a classic Greek salad? Parmesan? No. Pass. Mr. Mackey and Mr. Garrison are teachers in what animated show? <laughs> I watch cartoons. Uh, pass. Who wrote of Mice and Men? Oh, God. I don't know. 
All right. Well, seven correct. Yeah, still not bad. No, it's a pretty good score right not there. Bad, that's he played right. the game really well there. Adam and Eden Claw did a good job. He, yeah, he sure did. Do we really need the horse galloping now? Well, of course, it's Eden Claw. <laughs> they're, they're the equestrian city. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on. Yeah, the uh, horse brothel capital of the United States. Well, listen, it's not their fault it went down a dark road. They still, you know, I mean, people... It went a really dark road. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, are you ready? Oh, yeah! What type of creature is the title character in the computer animated feature Bolt? I don't know. He's a dog. Yes! What wow. group had the hit song No Scrubs? Weezer. No. TLC. Yes. What is the main color of the Energizer Bunny? Pink. Yes. Who wrote Of Mice and Men? Ooh. Is that J.D. Salinger? No. Oh, yeah, nice try. Yeah. Ah, oh, crap. It's another one I was supposed to have to read in school. <laughs> Orson Welles. No. Um, Fran Tarkenton. No. That's it. What actor is the star of the 2015 science fiction film The Martian? Oh, Dan Aykroyd. No. Um, <laughs> Good old Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> He's a cone uh, Eddie Murphy. No. Um, Marvin. No. That's it, Marvin. What country is Normandy in? Germany. No. Oh. Netherlands. No. Yeah. Spain. No. no. What Shakespeare play asks to be or not to be? Hamlet. Yes. That is the question. Ex- eczema affects what part of the body? The skin. Yes. What cheese is served with a classic Greek salad? Fermunda. No. Uh, feta. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Steve, you lose. Oh. Seven to six. Congrats, yeah. Adam. You're going to the WWE. Sweet. Yeah, nice work, Adam. Hang on the line. Man, that was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was close. But Steve lost. I'm a loser. Nice classic. I'm not yeah, that's Steve. I'm a loser. What is he? And I'm not what I to no, be. Steve's not what he appears to be. He thinks he's a winner, but no, he's a loser. Steve, if you would have gotten to the last question, Mr. Mackey and Mr. Garrison are teachers in what animated show? South Park. Yeah, oh, you would have gotten the tie. Steve. Damn it, didn't happen. Damn it. Uh, Adam knew a lot more than you. He knew that the uh, that France is the country that Normandy is in. He, uh, he knew that Matt Damon was the Martian. Matt Damon. <laughs> I don't think Steve saw that movie. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, I liked no. it. I enjoyed it. I think I tried. Yeah. It didn't last very long. Yeah, it's I mean it's a bit slow. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it was interesting. I liked it. Yeah, I don't think I'd watch it again, but I'm glad I saw it at least once. And then you had some really good guesses. I don't know who that last person was when you uh, of of mice and men. Oh, uh, f- football. Oh, Frank Tarkenton. Yeah, he's a football. <laughs> for the, a Viking quarterback. Uh, do you know who uh, wrote it? Is it James Patterson? No. Uh, uh, John Steinbeck. That's it. That's John it. Steinbeck. Steinbeck. I suck. Steinbeck. Uh, yeah, should have known Steinbeck. <laughs> well, congratulations to Adam on beating Steve this morning. That's right, man. All you got to do is tie or beat Steve. That's how you get the prize on beat makes. as simple as that. All right, so, uh, you know, we, you and I both agree that uh, Hair Club, our boss, yes. uh, among many things, uh, he's probably a foodie. Oh, 100%. Turns out that the majority of Americans say they're foodies, and I don't know. I mean, I think you really have to go out and just eat out at some finer restaurants, try all sorts of foods before you call yourself a foodie. I am definitely not a foodie. I love food, but I'm not a guy that wants to go somewhere that pays 30 bucks for a plate that has one scallop on it. See, I feel like nowadays, though, it does, you don't have to go super, super expensive to be a foodie. I just feel like you have to be trying a variety of different foods of different t- tastes and just really go out there and try different things all the time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Listen, I don't have a problem with that. We got 10 things that uh, people say they want to try but haven't, but I think if you have done a lot of these, maybe it makes you a foodie. How about kelp? Have you done kelp? The hell is kelp? It's like the seaweed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've had seaweed. Isn't that like seaweed wrapping around like sushi? Uh, no, that wouldn't be considered. No, kelp. it's more like a, that salad. Have you ever had? Look, here's a picture. Like a, that. Oh yeah, I don't think I did. No, I don't haven't. I haven't had. You that. haven't had that. No. I like it, and it's good, but it always gets stuck in my teeth. Oh, all right. Well, if it's good, yeah, I guess I try it once. It just has a slimy consistency. I don't no, know. No, it's 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 got a good crunch to it, and, oh, it really? and, and it's got a good flavor to it. I think you would like it. Oh, all yeah. Right. I all think right. I've had this at a sushi place. I was gonna even I got like a poke bowl sometimes. Yeah, like, you get it. Put oh, you know there. what? I think I have had one of these. Hmm. Oh, that was kelp. Yep. Okay. I kelp help you. Oh, no, never yeah. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a self-kelp group. Yeah. Those are good attempts. How about Terrible goats? Attempts. Have you ever had goats? No. I've had goat's milk and goat, goat, like cheese? goat milk cheese. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I have, but I don't remember. We, they cook a lot of goat in Mexican cuisine. and I, I think I had it when I was a kid, but I don't remember. I mean, I've had lamb, so I don't think I'd be opposed to goat. Yeah, you know? Fine. I mean... 
rolled ice cream I have had. Yes. Yes. It's good. They have um, uh, a, a guy comes to now three to one battle, and he has his little like portable stand and does rolled ice cream at rest at the wrestling oh, show. Oh, that's cool! What? It's amazing. Have you guys had any foods infused with CBD? It's called How We Roll Seattle. I wanted oh. to give him a shout out. Oh, How We Roll Seattle. Oh, How We Roll Seattle. Very cool. Good I've stuff. seen now at uh, at the New Seasons. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's an Oregon based supermarket that's opened up a couple of stores around here now in the Pacific Northwest. I should say in, C- in Seattle area. And I've seen they got a big display of CBD C- uh, CB- uh, CBD everything candy yes. bars and snacks and I don't know how helpful it is. It's taking over the world, man. Yeah. Have you had any yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it has taken over the world. It has, but I mean, I haven't. No. I mean, I've had caramels, but I think those are just regular pot caramels. I don't really know the difference, to be honest. I think CBD doesn't get you high. Okay, then I have not done that. Some can. Uh, oh, so, oh, so see, very, gonna, oh. very, very slight bit. And if you, you smoke a lot of it or do whatever, you can you can feel high. You won't feel as high as for as long as like maybe like an indica or a sativa. Oh, see, I was going to buy one of those candy and eat it, but if that could get me high. It's very, dude, you'd have to have a lot. You'd have to have a lot. Have you seen me eat a candy bar? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, I like the, the CBD like topicals, like the creams. Yeah, I have that. It's, it's really good on top of pudding. No, I'm oh, no, don't eat those. <laughs> it's yeah. Put it on your skin. Uh, it helps, though. Yeah, I, of course. This year, I, everyone's talking about this avocado toast. I, I, I've never tried it. You know, I haven't either. But I've had toast and I've had avocado. It doesn't seem like a, a thing that I shouldn't try. I just don't think I've ever put the two together yet because, well, it can be fattening. It's got mm-hmm. the carbs and, of course, the fat and the avocado, the carbs and the toast. I still want to do that thing where people take like the avocado, cut it in half, remove the pit, and then fill it with an egg. Ooh. And then oh. and cook it that way. Wow. Ooh. It looks good. I've seen okay. that, like, of those Facebook videos that you, I'll could, try it. you could cook in five minutes. You know those videos you watch that you never do? But you always see them, and you're like, I want to try that, and you yeah. never do. All right. We'll get a lot of people talking about goat. Goat street tacos in Mexico are fantastic. Yeah, I'll pass Some on people that said their uh, goat is delicious in tamales. I love tamales. Okay. I'm willing to try it. How about uh, pasta made out of chickpeas? I've had that. Huh. It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. I mean, Same with like spaghetti squash. I know, like it's a good alternative if you're trying not to get too much carb stuff going on. But, yeah, I've had that too, but it, it doesn't replace the OG pasta. No, the chickpeas <laughs> is a little better than the spaghetti sh- yes. sauce, but yeah. And it, uh, from what I remember, chickpea pasta doesn't stay well. So, like you, you have it the day that's good, but if you put it in the fridge and try to do the reheat, uh, it's not so good. Fancy artisanal donuts. Yes. Well, we're very spoiled oh, gosh, up here. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We're very spoiled up here. With voodoo donuts in Portland. Heavenly, and I think, is it Heavenly or Mighty O? Uh, Mighty O. Yeah, those guys are Legendary. Amazing. Legendary. Oh, legendary. Oh, oh. Epic donuts. That's what I'm thinking of. Right? It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. 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 Frost. So many. Yeah. How about black rice? Excuse me? That's yes. Bl- I think I've had black I've rice. I've had black rice. It's tasty. How about a smoothie bowl? Have you guys done that? I have. No, I've seen them. Like and those acai weird. bowls? Yeah. yeah. They're good. They look weird. Oh, they're good. They're you can great. Put, you can put so much in there. They're mm-hmm. so good. And then finally, hemp. Uh, you eat hemp? I don't know if I've ever eaten hemp. Somebody says we need to check out a show called Bong Appetit. It's a CBD cooking show. I'd imagine it's on Viceland. I'm not even sure if it is, but I'm pretty sure. Anything, <laughs> yeah, it's on yeah, Viceland. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you anything go. Has, anything call. to do with weed mm-hmm. is on Viceland. Good call. Steve. And now wrestling. They're actually doing a bunch of wrestling shows. Really? pretty awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Weed and wrestling, <laughs> man. Wrestling goes everywhere the people are. Yes. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah. They really do. Ooh, Bong Appetit is also on Hulu, too. It's fo- so funny. I thought wrestling and sci fi, like when they were on the sci fi channel, I thought, mm-hmm. why? Turns out so many geeks are into wrestling. Mm-hmm. So they knew oh, what yeah. they were doing. And now I guess they know, Steve, that a lot of stoners like wrestling too. But they have a great documentary show. It's called uh, The Dark Side of the Ring. And it talks about all the old stories of wrestling, like the Bruiser Brody murder and like uh, Elizabeth and Macho Man, the Montreal Screwjob, the Von Eric tragedy. It's a really good documentary series, even if you're not a wrestling fan. But they just debuted a new show called The Wrestlers. And it's talking about some of the new up and coming wrestlers. A guy goes around. Sky Damien and he travels and next week's show is Spotlighting Seattle oh nice so Defy Wrestling is going to be shown uh, on there because I remember he so, was there so uh, a Twitter verified champ could be in there uh, I might be in the background because I was there when they filmed it and I didn't think it was ever going to see the light of day and in fact it was because of the success of the Dark Side of the Ring documentary series that Viceland decided you know what we're actually going to do this show because oh, they, nice. they, they, they put it on the shelf forever Oh, look at you. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, so, you might see Steve in the background. So Viceland, if you want to get stoned and watch wrestling, that's the show. <laughs> that's the station to do that on. Nice. Got a well-known celebrity that just admitted that he once brought a hooker to a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, that's so awesome. Who did this? Ah, you really won't be surprised when I tell you. It's 717 <laughs> on The Rock. 
BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I think my wife has actually been letting me down because I know she's a Real Housewives fan. She didn't tell me that Denise Richards was on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I might want to watch that. I don't even know what Housewives are on that or any of those shows. I've never seen a single episode. But Denise Richards was married to Charlie Sheen, so yeah. she's going to have stories. That's true. That's the only reason I care is just to yeah. hear. Talk about drama. She might be the only housewife that could say her husband actually is more of a drama queen than anybody would be yeah, you're right. on those shows. Uh, they need to incorporate Charlie Sheen onto the show. Oh, that would be so good. I think I'd watch a reality show where Charlie and Denise try to figure out how to live a life after <laughs> his ridiculousness. And I'll tell you why. Because she did say on a recent episode of uh, Real Housewives that Charlie brought a hooker to her Thanksgiving dinner a few years ago. I have one speed. I have one gear. Go. Go. I do have a lot. You know, I have a lot more respect for her having to deal with this circus sideshow that is Charlie Sheen back in those days. Charlie came over for Thanksgiving for dinner uh, a few years ago and he had a hooker in the car in the driveway. Yeah. And he's like, uh, you know, I was afraid to tell me, well, she's in the driveway. Like, okay, she's in the driveway. I'm like... I said, I'll set a bite. Even a hooker deserves to have Thanksgiving dinner. Aw. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I had that marriage not last. I mean, she seems completely accepting of anything. I, I, I know, dude. Seriously, it's hard to believe that, that there's anything that she could have done that would have been, like, led to Charlie going, no, you're just unreasonable. I'm leaving. I mean, <laughs> come on, Charlie. I don't know. Is it more awkward for the, the people, the family at Thanksgiving or for the hooker? Because she's... I think it depends. Like, is she dressed, you know, to kill? Like, like pretty woman? Hooker? Exactly. Or is she, you know, a little bit more conservative in how she's dressed to where people might not know if she's a hooker? Then I think it's oh, fine. I feel like the kind of lifestyle Charlie was leading that she looked just like you'd expect yes. uh, yeah. 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 a hooker to look. Yeah. 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 The stereotypical look is what I'm expecting. I mean, does she go back to all of her hooker friends and say, you won't believe what happened? Oh, with yeah. Charlie. <laughs> I, got, I would. I, I got a Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. So, of course, this is what she says. So you got to go ask Charlie, hey, is it true? And Charlie actually did admit that it was true. But in true Charlie form, he just couldn't answer the question. Oh, he actually did. Uh, he gave us his answer in the form of a poem. I'm going to I'm going to read the poem, even though I don't I mean, I don't know what kind of poem this is. I can't find a rhyme. So Charlie said, yes, her story regarding Thanksgiving is absolutely true. The turkey I brought was, in fact, a lady of the night and a bit of a harlot. The thighs were especially robust. Uh, I don't know. How did I do? Was I poetry was slam good. worthy? Uh, I, I expose people to magic. Wow. I may forget about them tomorrow, but I they'll know. live with that memory for the rest of their lives. And that's a gift, man. My apology to all the slammers. I hope I didn't ruin everything. But I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I. You're supposed to snap? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, are you? Oh, see, I wrecked it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm so bad at this. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> it's the lukewarm topic of the day. So Charlie Sheen admits that he once brought a hooker to Denise Richards' Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yes! <laughs> And based on this, we want to know, what is the oddest thing that has happened at your family gathering? I do love these stories. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What is the oddest thing that has happened at your family gathering? Your calls, your texts, after Beastie Boys on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So Charlie Sheen admits that, yeah, uh, he once brought a hooker to uh, Denise Richards' Thanksgiving dinner. Of course, that was his uh, one of his ex-wives. And, of course, you know, it's supposed to be a family time and Charlie brings a hooker. A pretty odd thing to do. Mm-hmm. So we're wondering, how about you? What is the oddest thing that's happened at your family gathering? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Lisa in Renton. Lisa, you are on the uh, on the on, on the rock. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey, fifty. Uh, my mother turned fifty years old. Um, it's about thirty-two years ago. My birthday and her birthday both fell on Thanksgiving. Her best friend thought it would be funny to bring in a, a male stripper for her birthday in front of my whole family on this Thanksgiving. Guy, God, on Thanksgiving. Okay. Then. This guy came in. He must have weighed seventy-five pounds, soaking wet. Wore the ugliest G-string. Which what? I, yeah, oh, it was just awful. Oh, no. He smelled like he he smelled like he bathed in cologne. 
um, buck teeth, the whole bit. Uh, his hair was cut crooked, and he did this strip tease that was so awful. My mother blushed, and she said, hand it over to me, because it was my birthday, too. And I'm like, no, no, thank you. When he finished, he wouldn't leave. Oh, <laughs> for oh <laughs> no, he didn't. God, <laughs> they could not get let rid him? of this smelly dude. Oh, how, how, Lisa, how much did they pay for this low rent <laughs> Chippendale? How, how much? Well, I don't think it was refundable, and she wouldn't admit how much she paid. But I think she was more embarrassed than the rest of us because it was such. He was so skinny. It's like, oh, put a little meat on this guy, please. My God, maybe we should feed him. <laughs> well, that's why he wanted to stay. He wanted to get some more protein yeah. in his body. Oh, oh my God, it was just. It was so, so embarrassing. Oh, and were there and, and so like everybody was around? Everybody was around. Oh, yep, my I, dad oh. just kind of had to leave the room. Oh, that's hysterical. But, oh man, yeah. I wish. I see, if yeah. I was a kid there, I would have been laughing. I, it would have been the best Thanksgiving ever, just to see the awkward <laughs> adult moment. Oh, that's so well, cool. yeah. Oh, well, my my nephews were there, and they they were not. They were mortified. How's oh, that? <laughs> oh man, that is that is awesome. Thanks for the call, Lisa. That's fantastic. Ah, uh, you gotta love it when adults make good decisions. Yeah, it's, you gotta make sure you get the right stripper. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't well, believe what's on the back of backpacks. Uh, also, you gotta, you, you also gotta, you know, know the right holiday. That too. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, it's Arbor more Day. of an Easter yeah. thing. Yeah, Easter. Yeah, yeah you're actually yeah. right because you know you get springtime mating season. Sure. Yeah. You can dress up as a bunny and get naked. Yeah. yeah. Hop around. Yeah. Right. Get the Easter basket. Yeah, and you got to be bringing a little bit more in the cornucopia. You know what I'm saying, buddy? Yeah. I mean, you really. How about this texture? Says my mom flashed us at Thanksgiving at the table at my grandma's house. My brother and his girlfriend at the time also saw. I feel like that might be a, a dating deal breaker. If okay. you're early in the relationship, you're like, you know, I don't know if I want to be married to this family. Okay, I, I think I might be going a little foggy. Mm-hmm. Did you say the mom flashed everybody at Thanksgiving? My mom flashed us at the Thanksgiving table at my grandma's house. Mom, what are you doing? Wow, please tell me she was drinking. (laughs) But even then, why? Your children are there. Why? I mean, the only time they should see those is when they're infants, when then they forget. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. You know, you see them, but you forget them by the time you get older. If you're the boyfriend or the significant other of somebody in that family, when all that goes down, what happened to them? I feel like at that point, then all bets are off and I just hit the booze. Unless you're a Stacy's mom kind of guy, and you're like, oh, this is the moment I've been waiting for. It's the only reason I dated your daughter. See, in my head, I'm like, oh, can I get a shot? I can do no wrong in this family, clearly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. You're absolutely right. You, you, at that point, you know what? You're the best guy there. Someone said the oddest wow. thing that happened was at a Christmas party on my dad's side. Granted, I've never met my real dad because he's been in jail my whole life. When I was about 13 or 14, we were at the party. He shows up to the party unannounced. Nobody knew that he was out of jail. My mom's husband at the time, my biological dad, got into a fight, knock, knocking over the Christmas tree. That's wow. Brian in Tacoma. Oh, no. Now, that would have been a nice reunion, but you got to do it right. But then I guess if the guy spends time in prison, he's just used to his own rules. And he shows up and, and, and his woman's with a new dude on Christmas. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's wow. just that. You know what? What do you think is going to happen when you walk into the house? You know what I mean? What do you think is going to happen? Especially if you've been in jail for how many years? 14 years? What do you think? He could have at least dressed as Santa. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Of course, that doesn't always go well. As we know yeah. in your house, when people dress as Santa, they get their ass kicked by your father. Yeah, Uncle Frank got his ass kicked by my dad. There you go. Merry Christmas, everybody. In all fairness to my dad, Uncle Frank didn't warn us that he was going to come in as Santa Claus and just start handing out stuff. Yeah, but you know, the, I love the New York attitude. The time of year where if somebody comes in your house, okay, they're dressed as Santa. They're probably benevolent. I mean, you know what I mean? But no, not in New York. It's like, <laughs> no, you know, yeah. who the F is this? You are going to die, Santa. The New York uh, Christmas Carol. I saw Daddy punching Santa Claus. It's I very saw true. Daddy <laughs> Multiple Santa times. Santa Claus. Bell, it's Uncle Frank. And he violated him with our Christmas tree. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. And the best part was, even after he addressed who he was, it didn't stop my dad from punching him. It's not my dad's punching him because he's mad that he didn't even warn him. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you let us know next uh, time? I know. It's just like, okay, this is, I'm going to get my ass kicked no matter what happens here. Okay, great. And of course, the little kids are like, okay, we're never getting presents ever again. Damn.
206-421-ROCK, Texas at 77999. What is the oddest thing that's happened at your family gathering? I've had uh, the drunk uncle stories as well because, well, I don't know if your uncle was drunk at that point, but uh, my uncle, he was the, he was the, you know, the uncle that would always get like the DUIs and uh, he couldn't drive, obviously, and so he had a bike. Well, he decided that he wanted to go to the store while we had a uh, family get together and he was hammered himself and so he went on a bike, had no helmet, and so he was stopped by a police officer because he was riding his bike drunk and uh, without that helmet, he got a ticket for no helmet and the bike taken away because you don't really get arrested for riding a bike while intoxicated but he was way too wasted in order to do that so he ended up walking back home and was like what happened to the bike he's like i gotta take it away how about that yeah and what was that what holiday was this uh this was just a family get together like a barbecue oh. sort of thing oh nice yeah wow, wow. you guys the drunk uncles are the best <laughs> yeah no, 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 no. drunk uncles are really really <laughs> the best <laughs> they make the best stories yeah i mean you know in my family i will tell you my family for the most part never got along with my dad Really didn't get along with my dad. We were two different people, except one day out of the year. And ironically, I got along with my mom great every day of the year, except this one day of the year where actually I got along with my dad. Huh. Yeah, it was so bizarre. My father loved Christmas. And that one day of the year, he was the happiest guy on the planet. Okay. And he made sure that Santa got us everything we wanted. You know, dad facilitated that, made sure, hey, did all the letters get where they're supposed to go? All that cool stuff. Is it like it's one year to make good for the rest of the year? I don't know what it is. It's like he was, you know, I mean, he had a hard job and, and, and he worked in a sugar refinery loading 100 uh-huh. pound bags on a train every day. So when I think about the job that he did, I, I, I'm surprised he wasn't miserable more than he was. But Christmas he loved. He loved Christmas. But my mom did not love Christmas. And let's just say we all know about the magic of, of the holidays and you learn about the magic of the holidays at some point of your life. You know, you learn, oh, this is the true magic of the holidays. Mm-hmm. My mom. And love her to death, but you know, every once in a while, you know, uh, maybe she'd have a little too much black label. And on Christmas, she decided, "Here's the true magic of the holiday," because no. she was not happy with how my father and Santa had basically, I guess, financially allocated for how Christmas was happening. And uh, here I am. I mean, having a great time with my dad. You see the look on his face as I'm opening up all the stuff that I love, and my mm-hmm. sisters and brother. And, and then my mom says, "All right." I'm going to tell you about the magic of Christmas. And I was like, oh, my gosh. It was like, and I remember looking at my my siblings because they were older than me. And I'm like, uh, hey, guys, uh, getting some information here. Uh, you know, uh, can you verify? Can we authentic- confirm or deny this? Yeah. And, and you know, of course, my brother and sister are just like, yep. Welcome to the holidays, buddy. Oh, I, I'll never forget it. It was just like, wow, that was man. And and. I, you know, I never, I've seen a lot of expressions on my father's face. I'd never seen disappointment like mm-hmm. that on his face because this was his one day yeah, of the year. Yeah, deflated. Where, yeah, I mean, you, he really was happy. I don't remember him being a super happy guy when I was a young guy, and I don't because he was working his ass off all the time. And I was like, you know, that was the one time I looked at my mom and I'm like, you know, and I was kind of a mouthy kid. I, I think it was the one time I had a battle with my mom. I'm like, you know what? Nobody in this family is going to tell you, but I'm the kid that has the big mouth. You're kind of a douche right now, mom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and give, I, give dad one day. Yeah. And also, it's the day I get presents. It was the only time that my dad was like, wow, you're on my side. Because most of the time I used my mom against him to get my, you know. And, but that time I was like, I got to go bat for this dude. This is, this is, I got to go to bat. You're just, you, come on. Ah, you know what? You got to love, you got to love the 60s. Just people being able to, you know, do what they do. I mean, at least it wasn't this, like this texture. Thanksgiving, my great uncle's wife surprised us all with a belly dance. She walked into the living room, turned the stereo on with her custom CD and started belly dancing. She's 300 plus pounds. We were all mortified. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, look, I love belly dancing. So uh-huh. I, I, I have seen belly dancing from all sizes and shapes of women. And I have mm-hmm. to tell you, the ones that really know what they're doing, I don't they care what the their shape, whatever their shape or size is, uh-huh. they do a great job. You still have to know and ask or at least oh. know that you're, <laughs> you have to, you really have to say, Bro. yes, I'd like to see this. I would totally, I'd grab a turkey leg, put it in my mouth and take my shirt off and do it with her. Oh, good for you, buddy. So you get in the spirit. Yeah. Have you ever really been like a present, present for somebody who really knows what they're doing? 
Yeah, I've seen them at like some of those like art walks somewhere and oh. some like Port Townsend. And, Dude. and like I watch them and it's really freaking cool. Yeah, because you have to have a belly. See, the thing is, we're all about the flat stomach world now with a lot of women. And I'd make a great belly dancer. Oh, you would. Yeah, you would. But I have to tell you, because a lot of women, <laughs> I mean, you try to tell them, look, if you've got a belly, it's not a problem. It can be a really sexy thing. And those belly dancers have bellies, and they really, I mean, they dance those bad boys. And, well, it gives me thoughts of sugar plums dancing in my head. Let's just say that. Well, All right, then. Yeah. Mm. You're not, you're not, you're not didn't mm. do that for you, Steve? No, now I'm picturing you and sugar plums, and now yeah, it's boy. weird. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, sorry. And I thought I was actually trying to make it not weird. I'm glad that I actually did make it weird, and you really did. Thanks, make guys. It. I made it weirder, but you know, well, it's good. Well, all right, thanks. Good luck to you. Thanks, pal. I just, you know, it's, yeah. All right, how about this? What do you think is the absolute worst thing that you can do on a first date? Oh, guys. Well, whatever you... <laughs> all right. Or sugar plums. I'm going to tell you, it's 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Usually with my office, we, we do a flat fee that includes all your court costs, filing fees, credit counseling, credit reports in one cost. In Chapter 13 cases, that usually starts at about $900 uh, with Chapter 7 cases. So total costs, including all your court costs, attorney fees, is usually about $1,500. We offer payment plans on Chapter 7, so you can start a file with my office for as little as $200. You can send your creditor calls to us. We'll take your creditor calls while you get gather up your information and, and pay, make payments on the rest of the fees. But Chapter 13 cases, uh, we can make payment arrangements in most cases as well and get your case filed even sooner in a Chapter 13 case because of the reorganization aspect to it. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Thanks for listening.